Good day, Mark Lee, Ethics Trademark, and welcome to today's educational session. A little bit different today. Today, today's session, the 10 laws of trading. <laughs> I guess at some point I will change that to my 10 rules of trading as opposed to laws, but they are my rules my laws and when i say that and why maybe i use that word is we know that trading is not an exact science it's not let me just risk, risk disclosure as always before we get started i should put this up before not giving trading advice not telling you when to buy or sell in fact the exact opposite giving you the knowledge giving you the education that you can make your own calculated educated trading decisions that that's what these educational series are all about the 10 laws of trading we know that trading is not an exact science markets are live always changing reacting to unknown unforeseen circumstances and that's why it's so important to have this foundation, this set of rules that when in doubt, when we're not sure, when the going gets tough, when we go through a tough time in our trading and we have maybe a succession of losses and it doesn't seem like it's going well. Remember, we're in business every business has its ups and downs every business has cash flow problems some days some weeks some quarters are better than others as long as at the end we come out showing a profit that's what we're in business for and this is no different that's why we're in the business of being currency traders we dream is to make a profit but there are and will be tough times times where we question ourselves question our rules question our strategies our abilities our capabilities and why because we're dealing in cash because it's emotional and because we because we dealing in a business like this in cold hard cash where every decision we make has immediate results and immediate consequences it's hard to stick to the rules and we need to understand and have a base set of rules that we can turn to that we can rely on and that keeps us grounded where we know that we're not yes it's a speculative industry i know that but we aren't making and shouldn't make ever arbitrary decisions. Our decisions are calculated. And I put these 10 rules together, these 10 laws of trading, for you to refer to and to use and to have as your resource. And it's all based on the very foundation course we've been doing together. We've been doing it for weeks together. And as you know, FX Trademark, that's, that's what we do. We teach, we train, we mentor. Teaching people the right way to trade. And every subject and every topic is very involved and very in-depth. So here we're taking a step back and making sure we understand these basic rules. Okay, let's go through them. I do believe you'll find that um, valuable and it will help with your trading rule number one start small and you can just by the fact that this is my number one rule tells you yes i'm representing markets x and happy and proud to be working with them doing this educational series with them but it shows you whose side i'm on here i'm talking as a trader not as the broker as a trader and as a trader i'm saying to you start small 
trade smaller positional lot sizes than you would think. Why? Because there will be losing runs. You'll go through a bad patch. And if you're trading small, you will stay in the game. You'll live through and work your way through those bad runs. And I assure you, I assure you, the wins will add up. This business is all about consistency. It's not about a one-time big win. That's not what it is. If we follow the rules, taking calculated, educated trades, those big home runs will be there. The big wins will come, but if we don't go out looking for them. Trade conservatively, the big ones will come. So, number one, start small. Don't think small, think big, be confident, but trade smaller lot sizes until you've got that consistency working for you. Number two, don't add to a losing trade. And yes, I'm well aware of the concept of dollar cost averaging. So when things are going against you, add to that position, you're getting in at a better price. No, not here. No. If I'm losing a trade, there's absolutely no ways that I'm adding to that position. I accept that losing is part of trading. And if I go and I start playing around with my different time frames, and I'm seeing different scenarios, different trends, looking at the looking at the trade from all these different angles while I'm in the trade and telling myself to change my strategy and add to my position because it's going to turn around. No. What would I rather do? Accept the loss. Click that close or you've got or stick to your stop loss and look for a new opportunity. Why would I want to be in a trade where I have where I'm already losing? It doesn't mean I've got a bad strategy. It means the market might be beating me on this particular occasion. Rather, accept the loss and look for a new opportunity. So that's it. Number two, don't add to a losing trade. Number three. When in doubt, get out. Now, this is a little confusing because I know that you, we have gone through our strategies and we first thing we do when we take a trade, when we open a position, is calculate where our stop loss is going to be and put our stop loss in there. So that's fine. Leaving your stop loss there to be taken out, that's okay if the trade goes against you. However, if it starts going sideways, assuming you're looking for an uptrend or a downtrend, I mean, you have to adapt this to your particular strategy and set of circumstances. But if you've been in the trade for longer than you would like, because you're only meant to be in the trade, remember, for a set period of time, depending on the time frame you're working with, we spoke about six of whatever time frame I'm working with. And I'm working on the hourly. I expect you to be in the trade for roughly six hours. If I'm working on a four hour, I expect to be in my trade for roughly six four hour candlesticks, about a day. If I've already been in a few candles and this thing just isn't going the way I want and it hasn't hit my stop loss, I say to myself, why am I in this trade? If the only answer you have is, well, because I've got an open position and that's why I'm in the trade, you're doubting the trade, don't be scared to close the trade. Get out. Again, look for a new and better opportunity. Don't only stay in the trade because you're, you're already in it. You can get out of it. Especially if it's a, if your p &L is not showing much. A few pips either way rather look for a better opportunity. You're not closing your trade because you're getting nervous. You're just confident that you recognize that the initial sign or signal that you saw isn't there anymore. The market's lower. It's changed. 
So when in doubt, get out. That's number three. Number four. Again, whose side am I on here? Definitely the trader side. Don't overtrade the market. Don't take too many trades. Look, I'll, I'll word this even in another way. You'll know where you've become when you've reached that level you're looking to get to. When you're becoming an experienced trader is when you can look at the market, look at your charts, and walk away and not take a trade. That's when you know you've reached a good level. Taking a trade is easy. It really is. Click and take a trade. Anybody can take a trade. It's not that easy to not take a trade. We'll always find a reason to take a trade. We know that. And overtrading the market, thinking you're being conservative sometimes. Well, that's, you know, you can end up bleeding your account, thinking, oh, it's just small losses, it's fine. I'll take a little trade here, put in a shallow stop, and all of a sudden that starts adding up. Have a look at this point here. When we take a trade, what are we looking to do? We're looking, to, we're looking for kind of the perfect trade, correct? Doesn't mean, it doesn't even mean if we get this so-called perfect trade, it's going to end up being a winning trade. But if I'm looking for that perfect trade where I can, and we've done it, we've worked through our um, score sheet together, where we check mark 10 things I'm looking for every time I take a trade, trying to get as high as I can out of 10. We're looking to get 10 out of 10. Why would I take a trade that's nowhere near perfection in terms of setup? No need to. Be prepared to walk away and not take the trade. Number four, don't overtrade the market. Number five, stick to the plan. You've got your trading journal. You should be entering the reason you took the trade, what strategy you're using, what your thoughts were, the reasons behind it, and then stick to it. Have confidence in your trade. If if you are reading, which you probably are, and you're reading third-party analysis, tipsters, whatever word you want to use, and that's fine. We must be humble as traders. Nothing wrong with listening to and learning from those that we respect their trading decisions. But don't close your trade, open your trade purely based on that. Because that's not using your own education, your own knowledge. Don't add to and change your trading strategy and your ongoing trade and your open position based on, on other reasons other than your strategy itself. Stick to your plan. Trade the plan. If the money is making you doubt it because it looks like maybe, well, it's looking a little bit too big, the money part of it, then trade smaller position sizes. Trade the plan, not the money. Stick to the plan, number five. Number six, have a, a per trade loss limit and stick to it. And this amount should be a percentage. Let's say 2% of your working capital. It's hard if you haven't, if you haven't got a sizable account size. Go 2 to 5% of your working capital. That's the most you should have at risk at any, on any given trade. And stick to it. Stick to it. So if you're trading a, uh, Pick a number, $10,000 account, $500 should be the maximum, the absolute maximum that you're prepared to lose on any given trade, 5%. Have, have these amounts fixed in your strategy, a per trade loss limit, should be a percentage of your working capital as opposed to a dollar amount more professional, better way of working. 
So I'm saying professionals 1 to 2%. I'm giving us leeway and saying maybe as a retail trader who hasn't got the biggest account and you are still new and maybe 2 to 5%. That's it. Anything over that. So if you have a $1,000 account, and you are, you are prepared to lose $100 on that account. 10% of your working capital, not, not conservative enough for me. On a thousand, fifty dollars would be the most I'd be prepared to lose. And then it all comes down to pips. Remember, Trading a 10,000 lot position, let's say you're trading a, one of the majors, let's call it $10 a pip. 50 pips will be $50. That's fine. But don't start trading a 25,000 or 50,000 uh, position size with your $1,000 account because then you can take a loss, which is fine. All of a sudden, you've lost 20 or 30% of your working capital. That's not trading, that's not running a business. Have a per trade loss limit and stick to it. Number seven. Here I am talking about experienced traders. This rule. Because when you're starting as a new trader, you're putting in your stop loss, you're putting in your take profit and happy to sit and let the trade play itself out. However, one of the benefits of this business is you can manage the trade while it's going on. And you can have multiple lots and multiple take profit and stop loss levels at different percentages, at different, always at the right place, but you can afford to manage the trade. And maybe before it gets to your actual take profit that you originally had on your, let's say, three to one win loss ratio, and it's looking like, well, you've now made uh, at least an even money, and you're looking at two to one, maybe you're going to close a position uh, a lot and leave, leave the other lots going. So if you were trading a 50,000 position, you could trade, for example, two 25,000. Or if you're trading 100,000, you could trade 425,000. In other words, multiple lots, multiple stop loss and take profit levels, and you can manage the trade. This does take experience, and I wouldn't say it's for a start or new trader, a beginner trader, when you're still looking for some consistency and developing your strategy and getting comfortable. Then I'd rather just put in your stop loss, put in your take profit. But once you get a bit more experienced, a bit more confident, you're starting to get some consistency, sure, you can manage the trade. Number eight, cut your losses and let your profits run. This is, let's call it for want of a better word, ironic. That all of you out there, regardless of your level of experience, all traders know that the Goal, the idea, is to maximize your gains and minimize your losses. We know that. And yet, here is a fact, a fact that retail traders show the exact opposite. If you look, if you go to the back end and look at how traders are doing, the wins are small and the losses are big, the exact opposite. And it's a psychological thing because when you're in a trade, Kiara, don't know how, how else to word it, losing versus lost. When you're in a trade, you haven't lost. That's the problem. The problem meaning that, oh, hang on, let me hang on to this. I had it, my stop loss there. I'll move it down a little bit. I'll take my stop loss out. The, mark, why, the market's going to turn. Eventually it will turn. And it's happened to you before where you get stopped out. And sure enough, a few pips later, it does turn. And then you feel, oh, maybe I should have 
taken my stop out. Maybe I need a deeper stop. And arbitrarily changing your stop loss levels and your, and your closing of your, your positions. Can't do that. Cut your losses. Let the profits run. Why? Because when you're losing, you think, well, I haven't lost yet. If the trade is closed, it's now lost. That's why I wrote losing versus lost. And yet, when the market's going in one's favor, a new, a new retail trader, and then it takes a bit of a breather, comes back a little bit, very quick to close the trade and to kind of justify it by saying, I'm being conservative, I'm not greedy. Quick to close the winning, but reluctant to to accept the loss. I want you to think the other way. Accept the loss, no big deal. That's your loss, that's your stop loss, going against you, point out, close the trade. When it's going for you, let the market breathe. Have confidence. Don't be nervous always that, well, I'm gonna give away all my profit because now, sure, it broke through. I took, let's say, a breakout trade. It broke through resistance or support. Now it's coming back. I'm getting a bit nervous. Let the market do its thing. Cut your losses. Let your profits run. Be confident in your strategy. Number nine, be aware of the trend. You must know what the trend is, regardless of what strategy you're using or employing. And once you've adopted a certain strategy, and you know what the trend is, don't chop and change it during the trade. Be aware of the trend. We've analyzed uptrends, higher highs and higher lows. Those are the characteristics of an uptrend, particularly higher lows. So you must know if I'm in an uptrend and if that higher low gets taken out, I'm no more in an uptrend. Recognize it. If you're in a downtrend, you've got lower lows and lower highs. And when one of those, those swing highs, in other words, your lower high gets taken out, recognize it. You're no more in a downtrend. Be aware of the trend. And with the, the, the rules that we've learned, to recognize an uptrend, a downtrend, or it's a sideways trend. And if it is a sideways trend, that's fine. We can adopt a nice range trading strategy, a bounce trade, buying off support levels, selling off resistance levels. But recognize that trend. Number 10, for all us Forex traders, think pips, not money. If you're thinking money, you're trading at an account size that is too big for your pocket. <laughs> Think pips. And I've given an example, 30 pips. If you have a 30 pip gain on a, let's say you're trading the, as you know, the four hour is has become my time frame of choice. Let's say you make a nice 30 pip gain. If that's only $15 to you, don't think that there's something wrong with your strategy because it was worth $15 because then you're trading a possibly a smaller position size and that's fine I mean at 30 pips $15 maybe 50 cents a pip but remember 30 pips could be $15 $30 300 3000 30000 it's still 30 pips which is a nice gain a nice profit on a four hour so if you're making the pips means your strategy is working the right way for you, but you're not that happy with the amount of money, you need to be trading a larger account size. Don't start looking for, instead of 30 pips, as an example, 50 or 60 or 80 or 100, just because that'll give you the amount of money you want. No, then readjust your account size. Think pips, not money. Okay. And these 10 rules, laws, they're there for you as a reference. Use it. 
When in doubt, check out these rules. We know it's not an exact science trading and you can't use and stick to every rule every time. We're humans, we're emotional, but you need some basis, you need a foundation. And I do believe that these 10 rules would be a great foundation for you starting out on your as full-time or part-time, but let's call it professional traders. For the day, if you can't understand it simply, you don't understand it well enough. I believe that. Any questions, please feel free. Mark at fxtrademark.com. I'll answer all your trading related questions as best I can. And visit our website, fxtrademark.com. Have a look at the courses, the services that we offer. That's what we have for we're, uh, your education partner. These sessions we're doing with X-Ray, with, uh, with Markets X. Have a look at the menu of sessions that I'm doing. I'm doing the educational session like we're doing now. I do live trade setups where we go through the charts, show you the trades I'm looking at, the, my, my reasoning, my thinking for opting to take certain trades. I do a question and answer uh, session on Fridays. So I'm here to work with you. Have a look at the menu. I try to keep it them between 25 and 30 minutes. They brief, they designed to help you to get you to that level that you want to get to, being an independent trader, making your own educated, calculated trading decisions. Thanks, guys. Good trading. Keep that discipline. Look forward to seeing you at our next session. Thank you.